All right, I want to go over some of the comments here. And the first one here, the funniest thing I heard Steve Anderson say, explaining the bottom split, is that because hell is in the middle of the earth, gravity will suspend Satan there halfway on the ball earth. Therefore, it's bottomless. What? Yeah. So this is, um, you know, what uh, the way it looks, is explained to me is that on the ball earth, you've got the core of the earth the very center and it's always moving and because it's always moving it never has a true bottom all right that sounds fantastic but it just doesn't ring true to me because one it's moving extremely slow so slow you wouldn't even notice it if you were there and then so slow that you could spin it the other way and say it always has a bottom even though it's always moving it always has a bottom it doesn't matter to me uh, there's coming a time when we're gonna see that this idea of a ball earth and this idea that we are one planet out of many planets and the idea that we're zooming through the whole thing the whole heliocentric model is gonna seem like utter ridiculousness and so I, I take confidence in that. Uh, obviously, um, this term bottomless pit is found only in the book of Revelation. All right. And the book of Revelation is a spiritual book. It's meant to be seen spiritually, not physically. So, in my opinion, too many people try to make a physical sense out of something that's spiritual alright so if you don't see it spiritually um, you're gonna try to you know you're gonna try to see it physically and it, it, you're not gonna understand it and uh, to me the, the bottomless pit is not a good place right so I think too much attention is probably focused on the bottomless pit and I, I do not in any way I cannot buy that cannot buy that explanation uh, but people will go to great lengths to try to explain their worldview I understand that so I like Steven Anderson but he's he's wrong on a number of things but he is a great preacher he does preach and say what he believes and uh, you know I would encourage everybody just be honest about what you believe uh, right or wrong be honest about what you believe. All right, enough of that. In um, white roses for the bride of Christ. Okay. In the news, Tesla has now become a trillion dollar company just as Apple and Amazon did last year. In the Bible, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth. In the news, a record number of container ships are backlogged at American ports. They are still backlogged as of November 9, 2022. In the Bible, and every shipmaster, and all the company, and ships, and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. Revelation 18 verse 4 come out of her my people all right so uh, uh, <laughs> if you truly believe that America is Babylon and that verse 18 or verse 4 in chapter 18 is talking is telling you get out of America then get out of America right I mean if you truly believe that then you wouldn't be in America you'd be getting out of America you get what I'm saying if you truly believed America was Babylon you wouldn't be here and my contention is that these people that are preaching this idea that America is Babylon 
that live in America, they don't truly believe what they're preaching. And now, I, I've said this um, several times, over and over. The fourth kingdom of Daniel is the kingdom of Revelation. Or the fourth beast of Daniel is the fourth beast of Revelation. The fourth beast cannot be anything other than the Roman Empire. Now, you would have to make an argument that the Roman Empire transitioned into the United States. Uh, the problem is... <laughs> there's a big problem. Okay, so you're going to say... Uh, when was... Uh, what was it? 1776? So, 1700 years... 1400 years whatever there was the Roman Empire ceased to exist well it, the Bible does say uh, the beast that was and is not and yet is the problem is when you call so in Revelation 17 it, it calls the beast the great whore and it says that she has she reigns over the kings of the earth. All right, so the like take Joe Biden for example. He does not reign over the kings of the earth. You could argue he has great influence and great relationships with everybody around the world, no doubt about that. But she does not reign or he does not reign and he's not a she and the United States is a country not a religion the reason why it's mentioned as the great whore or the woman in the book of Revelation is because it's a religion you think of white roses for the bride of Christ well the prostitute the great prostitute the great whore is a substitute wife somebody that tries to take the place of a wife somebody that tries to be like the wife but is not the wife that's why this is the great whore in Revelation 17 it's a religion it's a pretending to be the body of Christ and it's not the body of Christ the bride of Christ is the body of Christ and the great whore makes herself look like the body of Christ but she is not the body of Christ and this look there's no other religion in the world that tries to mimic itself to look exactly like the Christian religion and if you believe Catholicism and Christianity is the same thing you're not seeing it your eyes are closed they are not the same at all and I've you know, went over this, uh, I go over this all the time. Math, if you go to Matthew 16, and I know I got at least one Catholic friend out there that tunes in from time to time. Jesus asked his disciples, Whom do men say that I am? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elias, and others, J Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now the rock, the church is built on that. That's the rock. That the fact that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Alright, so the Catholics say no. Our, ch our church is not built on that. The Catholics say our church is built on Peter. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So, if you're a Catholic, you cross out that, and then you put all your faith and trust in Peter, and say that this, Peter is the rock. Peter means Petra, means rock. And, uh, then we go down to verse 23 and you see what the church is built on the Catholic Church is built on Satan 
and they are not built on the fact that Jesus is the Christ the Son of the Living God they masquerade themselves as though they were Christians and they are not and it's you know more confusing today than it's ever been like when I was a kid it was very pre uh, prevalent that Catholics were not the same as Christians you can go back and look at the history of uh, John F. Kennedy, how he was a Catholic, and how people didn't think he could get elected because he was a Catholic. And now, there is no uh, sort of separation, you know. Catholics, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're Catholic. You, you could be a Muslim and be President of the United States. Nobody cares anymore. That's how much the world has devolved. Right, but here in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4. Now, I'm not accusing anybody of being a Muslim. All right, let's, I just want to get that out of the way. And I know what you're thinking. But I want to concentrate on the fact that Jesus Christ is the rock, not Peter. And there is no support for this idea of a pope. And then when you read verses about the Antichrist you have heard that the Antichrist shall come but I tell you that many Antichrists there are many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time now the Antichrist is the fourth king of the fourth kingdom or the I should say the king of the fourth kingdom right which of Daniel so the fourth beast of Daniel is the beast of Revelation and the king of that kingdom is the Antichrist all right the son of perdition and the spirit of the son of perdition the man of sin who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God and the word Pope means God. Pope means Papa, which is Holy Father, and Holy Father is God. It could not be more obvious. But because the Roman Catholic Church is so, full, so fully aware of this, they've gone to great lengths to try to confuse people. And by pointing at anything and everything other than themselves like a great de uh, a great defense lawyer right if you're on the stand for murder well your lawyer is going to try to point to everybody and anybody but yourself and try to create reasonable doubt and all they have to do is fool a few people they really they only have to fool one person in a court of law. Just enough to convince them not to point the finger at you. All right, and that's what exactly what's going on in the world today. And it's worse today than it's ever been. All right, so enough of that. If you don't see it, there's probably a reason for it, okay? Now, if you truly put the truth above everything else, you're eventually going to see it. You're going to no longer be able to deny it. Fact of the matter is the Roman Catholic Church is the Roman Empire which is the fourth beast of Daniel. And so in, uh, as it concerns these verses in Revelation 18 these are not talking about one country but they're talking about the whole kingdom or the whole world that we're living in now. It's not narrow to a, a country here or a country there. This is about the whole entire world. All right. And then <clears throat> I'm going to close it on this. You know, this is such a great comment here that I almost want to 
I'd like to do a whole video by itself just talking about that but can I save that one for last because that's really good here thank you for this brother the way is narrow indeed also first Timothy 6 verse 10 it is such a huge scripture for the love of money is the root of all evil which goes along with Matthew 24 no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other he cannot serve God and mammon money and riches for the love of money is the root of all evil what a huge scripture that is in a battle between good and evil which our world is we are told that the root of all evil or we are told what the root of all evil is and we can clearly see the truth of that wow yeah that's absolutely true um, first of all let me say you've heard of, I've heard a lot of people say hey uh, you know you ask them what is the root of all evil and they'll say money haha -ha, I know that one it's money money's the root of all evil no no that's right buddy money is not the root of all evil if money was the root of all evil then I'd be pure as the driven snow cuz I ain't got any right that's right but it's the love of money and the, and obvious to me I think it's pro probably pretty obvious to you the money is driving the world and it's driving it in the wrong direction right so I, I contend that our entire government is based on people with money and what they want to do with their money and their influence on laws regulations and so on and so forth and it's all money driven you know every all the way down to the police officer that arrests you he's arresting you because he's making money for the state all right now that doesn't mean we shouldn't abide by the laws we have to we have to respect the laws we have to respect those who enforce the law and so on and so forth but the whole thing's driven by money and uh, more so than ever before see I'm old enough to remember when cops weren't so hell-bent on uh, dishing out tickets and arresting people you know when I was a kid I had a a, a, a cop um, tell me to hit the ground and he pointed a shotgun at my at, a, at my face and he was shaken he was shaken and his voice was trembling and he was madder than hell and he could have killed me right there he would have been legally right to shoot me dead right there because of that situation at that moment the but he had compassion in his heart he knew who I was he knew my parents and so he wasn't going to do it but he was madder than hell at me and he had good right to, good reason to be madder than hell at me but in the you know in the world today I'd be dead because there is no mercy at all with the police officers they pull you over they're gonna get you they're gonna find something and they're gonna stick it to you that's not the way it was when I was growing up today it is very strict world that we live in and so uh, you know and I contend it's the reason is is because the way these guys are trained and the pressures that are put on them to make arrests and to write tickets and to get that money flowing into the police department that's what I think you know <laughs> that's the fact of the matter so anyways I appreciate that and I mean that's absolutely true and that goes all the way you know from your locals all the way to Washington DC everything's driven by money and the city councils around here they they get in big time arguments because they're getting money from the state and they're trying to figure out what they want to do with the money and everybody's getting mad at everybody all the time well I want to do this with them. then you got people trying to take a piece of the pie for themselves and so on and so forth the whole world is just an absolute mess so anyways who cares no that's absolutely right the love of money the love of money is the root of all evil 
And so, I, you know, I could do a couple hours on that because there's a, I got some opinions on that stuff right there. But let, I want to get into this. I've already gone way too long. The Hour of Testing, Daniel Chapter 3. Did I get fired up on that money stuff? Number one, because I ain't gotten none. That probably fires me up too, but Daniel chapter 3. Now, I did this video on, uh, you know, the hour of temptation. And the hour of temptation is judgment day, right? So we are at the last trump, at the sound of the trumpet, we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. And then our enemy is gathered at our feet. This is the temptation. This is the deception. The deceiving Satan goes out to, to deceive the nations and gathers together the unsaved. This is that's the hour of temptation. And so in Revelation 3:10, when it and when it says, "I shall keep thee from the hour of temptation," that's what it's talking about. Now, uh, bread of life makes a great comparison, uh, if you will, to what we read about in Daniel 3 and I won't read Daniel 3 but I'll just sort of go over you probably already know it. it's the where uh, there are three guys I can never say their names I'm gonna try to if you know me I can't speak English very good then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and those three guys so there was a, a decree or a law or what have you that everybody when they hear the music they have to bow down and worship the golden image and the golden image uh, this image was uh, 60 cubits tall and 6 cubits wide and so this is like a pillar right very tall and not real wide so six cubits is about nine feet wide 60 cubits tall is about 90 feet I mean like you uh, 90 feet is just a, probably a little bit lower just barely lower than your water towers nine feet wide is not very wide at all in comparison but anyways who cares so uh, when this happens, there's this, you know, hey, some, you know, these people come along and say, hey, these guys aren't worshiping, you know, our gods. They're worshiping their own god. And so Nebuchadnezzar brings them in and he says, all right, you got to pay the price. You're going to be punished. We're going to throw you in a furnace and we're going to turn up the heat. All right, so if you think of the furnace, as hell or as may not hell that's a bad word you think of the furnace as judgment day all right and so judgment day is coming and we're gonna all go through the fire in a sense in all of our uncleanness just like when you're purifying gold and silver you throw it in the fire and it in it the fire burns off all the impurities so also are we going to go through the fire and all of our impurities are going to be burned off all right and so when these three guys went through the fire the fire didn't hurt them at all they came out the other side and then of course Nebuchadnezzar said all right these guys they showed me something but there was one thing in here if I can find it there we go that's right in front of my face okay he answered and said lo I see four men loose well there was only three that walked in walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt in the form of the fourth is like the Son of God and the, of course Jesus is the Son of God and so Jesus goes through the fire he led the way he was God in the flesh manifest in the flesh and he led the way for us and he went through the fire purified and we follow him through the fire and also are purified uh, once, once we go through this pure you know through the fire once 
judgment day comes then we are passed through the fire and made pure um, and we're already halfway there in a the sense that we're spiritually born of God right now and the spirit that is in us is pure but uh, this is a great comparison verse if you will or chapters and the ideas are parallel no question about it it's a great way to understand the entire Bible because this obviously is about this is a representation of what is going to come all right we saw these guys go pass through judgment so also we that are born of God are going to pass through judgment and come out the other side here is the driven snow. Alright, so thanks for these comments. Good stuff. Keep them coming.